So, let's start again. Um, the audience, please welcome on the stage Gerd Hering. He's going to talk about a self-made portable HF transceiver with Hermes Light 2 and Raspberry Pi. Thank you. I will present you a mobile SDR transceiver. This is a real size of the display and the Raspberry Pi behind. And you, I, I use a Hermes Light 2 module with the same size. So you can use it. This is about it is smaller than this. It is, but it's not great. You can use it mobile or in the backpack or so on. I came to this uh, idea because I heard last year that the ICOM IC705 are very popular, but the price is also very high of this. So I tried to make it myself. I use a Raspberry Pi with a 5-inch display and a Hermes Light 2 transceiver. I will describe it later. The Hermes Light 2 receiver works on all HF bands with about 5 watts and it is built in this standard aluminium case. I use mostly the SDR program from Spark SDR, com, perhaps you know it, which can use nearly all modes like SSB, FT8, CV and so on. Here you see the both devices, this part here working and the Hermes Light 2 in the same case and the keyboard and here you see a mouse and so on. So my transceiver consists of two parts, the Hermes Light 2 and the Raspberry Pi 4 with a 5-inch display. I use a display from WaveShare which can be built into a standard aluminium case. You can also use displays from other manufacturers. Uh, they have often a touch screen. This has also a touch screen, but this is uh, about five years old and the touch screen does not work very well, but the rest is okay. Furthermore, you need a keyboard and a mouse. I recommend the original Raspberry Pi keyboard, which has an integrated USB hub. And you can make SSB if you use a USB sound card, because you know a Raspberry Pis have no US uh, sound cards inside. But USB sound cards works very well with headphones, a uh, thing like this, because the Raspberry has no intern, I have said it has no intern sound card. Digital modes like FT8 and so on are possible. If you work in the shack, the both components were connected over Ethernet by a switch or a hub to a router, normally, as in my case, a Fritz box. This router gives via DHCP different IP addresses to the devices. If you work mobile, you have normally no switch or DHCP server. In this case, the Raspberry gives a suitable IP address to the Hermes Light 2, but you must use a cross cable, an Ethernet cable with inverted RX and TX devices. This, uh, th you must change the RX and TX side because it's usually it doesn't work if you turn the your telephone. It also doesn't work. It's very simple, but many uh, people forget it. Uh, now to the Hermes Light 2. It's a low-cost direct up-down conversion software-defined radio based on a broadband modem chip, and, the Her and it supports a Hermes SDR project. It's entirely open source and open hardware including the tools for, used for design and fabrication files. Over 500 uh, Hermes Light 2 units have been successfully built. A uh, short uh, view to the specifications. Uh, frequency range, shortwave, 
power, 5 watt, I've told it, bit resolution of the DAC, uh, ADC is 12 bits and connection to PC over Ethernet and also over VLAN. More information on hermeslide2.com or order in the Chinese firma w, uh, makerfabs.com. Uh, so here you see the transceiver with the uh, screenshot from Spark.com uh, in FT8 mode. Uh, I normally use this uh, program because it works on nearly all OS or operation systems. And the developer, Alan, supports it very reliable. Another useful program will be Quisk, which is based on Python. So to the Raspberry Pi module, in the last year when I developed this device, the Raspberry Pi boards were very expensive and rare, and I found some CM4 modules to an acceptable price. So I tried a CM4 module, it's a small module, which has the same uh, specifications like a Raspberry Pi. It has two gigabyte RAM and a 16 gigabyte eMMC storage. The CM4 models have no easily accessible, accessible connections like HDMI, USB, but they are smaller and universal usable. You have to use a special I.O. board. I choose the CM4 I.O. board from WaveShare with all current ports, Ethernet, and so on. So I have more USB ports and can open the case for all import ports. Here you see this, uh, this uh, I.O. board. The CM4 board will put here in this area. You have here the CM4 socket. The CM4 socket is nothing to solder by hand. And here you have the normal uh, connections from a Raspberry Pi. A problem is that you cannot uh, install a CM4 board like a normal Raspberry. A normal Raspberry Pi uh, lo is loading is this OS from an SD card. The CM4 model expects the OS on the built-in EMC storage. The installation manual can be found on the normal Raspberry Pi documentation. I describe the installation with a Linux PC, uh, the source code for the RPI boot to start the CM4, CM module is on Git. You can install it, you clone the, uh, the, the user files from uh, GitHub, and then you install the driver, and with make, the USB tool is installed. Now you can have um, a connection from the IE CMIO port with a USB cable to a normal PC. Uh, in Linux, the CM4 module will be recognized with this commander and gives more information. You will see on the next uh, slice. So on my, with the instruction LSBLK, you can see how the CM module is mounted in the directory. In this case, you have a third partition, STC called STC, and this partition has two parts, STC1 for boot, STC2 for the normal file, normal file system. Here, here you find the, uh, the explanations. Now you have to copy the desired OS in, the, in your file system on your PC. You can download the OS and copy it 
in the to the EMC uh, storage with this uh, command. Um, I was surprised, but the copying will take about 10 minutes or more. But then it works. Uh, you have to. Next step is to activate the USB connections for keyboard and mouse on the I.O. board. This is a special feature of the WaveShare board. If you use another board, it may be a different procedure. You have to add a command into the file config text. You see, you open the file config text in the boot partition, and then you add this line at the end. And now the CM4 model can be restarted. Switch off power supply, turn boot switch on. This is uh, the method to go on. The CM4 module starts like a normal Raspberry Pi. And then you can uh, do this normal com. com uh, then you can install the used or the, the usable programs. Installation of WSJT is described here. You have to look for Raspberry Pi packets. Installation of Spark SDR, the actual version, is can download it here. I think the actual version is this uh, RPI 64-bit Linux ARM 64 uh, Debian. And you can also install a quiz Quisk from James Oystrom. Here you find the installation Heinz. And with this command, you can install Quisk with a, a normal Python command pip. Uh, if you work with digital modes, you have to make some. Uh, some configurations in the uh, path of the data sets in the Spark.com uh, program. Here you have, I have give you the, uh, the path. Important is, in that uh, case, the Raspberry Pi has the exact time. If you work on your shack, you got normal, uh, normally the time from your router from your Fritz box, but if you work mobile, you cannot get uh, exactly time. So the simplest way is to use a RTC module, a real-time clock module, this small part here. This module is adjusted to the exact time and saves it with the help of a battery. You can put this port easily into the GPIO interface here is a small picture, price is very low, but they uh, work very good there. Uh, this part has a small battery, and though it uh, saves the time. And I've described the installation of the RTC module. You must connect the RPI to your internet router to get the uh, correct time. The data transfer is used with the I2C protocol. This has to be activated with Raspberry config. Don't forget it. It works. It don't work otherwise. After new start, you have to activate in the file etc modules with sudo. Uh, you, you open an editor and attach the two lines to the end of the file. So, <laughs> <No. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> the problem is I have uh, normally a Linux notebook, but the Linux notebook has an ACU which is very dead. <laughs> so I took a Linux uh, Windows load notebook and I don't know that you want to restart it. <laughs> the only, uh, I have also the presentation on a, on a stick. We can make the last files, but 
Microsoft has to make up new start. Yes. Is there um, PDF oder LibreOffice, man kann auch PDF machen. Was macht er jetzt? Jetzt oh, this this is the part where we are. Um, you have to give the to to add these two lines. Uh, my mouse is not working, but uh, okay, I make you extra touch. Uh, we have to attach these two lines and to uh, install the I2C tools. After, after a new start, you can check the I2C address here and with sudo hy clock. HW clock shows uh, you can show the time of the RTC module. This is normally false because the, the RTC module is not synchronized. With this commander, you save the exact time in the RTC module, and uh, then you have the right time in the RTC module, but you have to install to add a new line. This is here. You can see it in the file rtc rc dot local before the command exit zero, and then the uh, this command is uh, executed during the start of the RPI in the next time. Okay, next. So you can see uh, see here the. Mobile transceiver is the same picture as in the before. You can use also another software, the in Germany often used NWT2 network analyzer, the QUISC, or if you have to or want to use a logbook, this program CQRLOG works also on Raspberry and many other software. And then, if you want more power, you can use a 100 watt power amplifier with a modern LDMOS MRF 101. You find the PCB and document documentation here. The very great advantage is for radio amateurs like me who do not want to make special coils. You do not need to build a special coil or a transformer. You can use this industrial produced coil and it works very well. I've tried it and 
I'm very content with this power amplifier. Okay. Thank you for your attention. If you want more information, please send a mail to me. And I hope you have learned something you now. And all. Okay, so thank you very much, Gerd, for this interesting contribution. And it is right in the core of what we want to reach with this SDRA, with the SDRA in general, because as we said in the, in, in the entrance, in the beginning, uh, we want to enable you to create your own devices. And Gerhard is a fantastic example, and this is the reason why I ask you to give this talk. Uh, he's a fantastic example uh, because he created his own, his own device, his own TRX. And um, it is not so difficult. You can do that with the limited means and with prefabricated boards, which you can just buy and you combine them and you add some bits and pieces here and there. And then you have your own TRX. You can create those things. And so, um, are there any questions about how to do that? Hello, I'm Kurt, DF8KVK. Uh, my question is in the comparison to the uh, IC705, what I miss now in, in your solution is the VHF UHF part. Is there any possibility to use? In another SDR as a basis to have this um, other pens as well? You can also use another SDR because this is a normal Raspberry Pi, the display in this small case, and you can use everything what you can put here. <laughs> you have here Ethernet, you have USB, you can, and if you have a program that's working on the Raspberry, you can use, use every device, every modem. You can, uh, the Hermes Light, the, the disadvantage from Hermes Light 2 is that you have uh, the frequency fr range from up to 38 megahertz. If you want more, you can use a transverter, but I do not know actually a modem or SDR uh, device that works in higher frequency uh, beside the, this RTL dongles, but there are only receivers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's another question, please go ahead. Uh, a comment rather more than a question. My name is Steve Gizaraxia. Uh, I'm pretty sure that you could actually use a standard Raspberry Pi for uh, and make a lot of what you said, which I'm very impressed with, simpler. What is your uh, Sorry? I do not understand your question. Oh, sorry, it was a, more than, uh, it was a comment more than a question. Okay, thank and you. As a result of the gentleman's question here, there are uh, the British Amateur Television Group, I think, actually uh -huh. have SDRs based on the Adnan Pluto which actually go mm -hmm. from uh, they'll, they'll go from six meters up to I think mm -hmm. uh, one point three gigahertz. Yes, yes. Yeah. So it's just a comment. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the other yeah. Pluto works on higher frequency up to three hundred megahertz, I think, and some uh, people use it for a uh, satellite. For yeah. But uh, I'm a fan of shortwave. <laughs> yeah, you know, but so I think 300 megahertz is about too high for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. It was an impressive lecture. Okay, any further questions to Gerd? Any comments on the work of Gerhard? I think this is not the case at the moment. So we can...
Thank you, Gerhard, with a big, warm applause. Thank you, thank you.